The other day, I saw a meme posted by a Christian about the stages of evolution of a Christian, where the end result is falling to your knees and begging for mercy in worship of a god. And I think that the longer it's been since I left my faith, the more dumbfounded I am by the things that religious people post, by the things they celebrate. This is in no way an evolution. Allow me to explain. When I was a missionary kid, I used to go to worship services all the time. Everyone would sing, some people would raise their hands, and one guy in particular in the front row would go all out, getting on his knees or sometimes lying face down on the ground in a display of total subjugation before God. And the image stuck with me, but it wasn't until later, much later, that I really grasped how utterly ironic this was. Singing songs about how God is love, great is his faithfulness, his mercies endure forever, he's Abba, he's Father, he's Dad, while assuming a slave position. Because that's what this is, making yourself small and non-threatening, easy to cuff or subdue, bowing your head to avoid eye contact, getting on the ground, and putting your hands up in total submission, as though trying to avoid the wrath of a tyrannical king who could fly off the handle at any moment, as though attempting to appease a narcissistic and abusive partner. It's a normalization of the slave-master mentality. It is not a healthy father-child relationship. In fact, if you saw a parent forcing their kid to prostrate themselves on the ground in worship before them, you would call CPS, because this is not the image of a tender-hearted father that you can confide in, who listens to your worries and, without judgment, simply hugs you and says, I sure do love you, pumpkin. It's gonna be okay. It's the image of Ivan the Terrible, a tyrannical czar who in a fit of rage flew off the handle and murdered his own son because there was no other way to appease his wrath. Sure, there are plenty of verses in the Bible about how God is slow to anger and abounding in love. God is love. And if you cherry pick out just these verses, you know, the ones they like to highlight in church, you could easily dismiss me as someone who hasn't ever read the Bible. But if you dig deeper, you read the entire thing, a picture begins to emerge of an easily angered monster, who claims to love the world, but wipes out an entire planet in a global flood, who claims to oppose a single murder, but repeatedly commands his own people to commit genocide. Uh, like, did you know that there's a story in 2 Samuel 6 of a priest named Uzzah who's helping bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem on an ox cart, and when the oxen trips, the Ark starts to slide off the cart and Uzo reaches up to stabilize it, but the second he touches God's shiny trinket, God strikes him dead in a fit of rage? And in case you forgot, the Ark of the Covenant was the golden box that housed the Ten Commandments. You know, the ones that said, thou shalt not kill? So we have a God of love, and there is no fear in love, yet if you know what's good for you, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What an absolute mindfuck. If his mercies truly know no end, then why would he intentionally create an eternal torture chamber as punishment for finite sins against him? If he, quote, desires mercy, not sacrifice, then why does he need a blood sacrifice as penance for not being born perfect? And why does he need you to believe it at all for the purifying magic to work? What a warped labyrinthian mind game of contradictions and doublespeak. Telling someone without me you're nothing, who are you that you can relate to me, you'll fear me if you know what's best for you, is abusive and narcissistic. So when Christians who've never even read their Bible cover to cover descend into my comments to tell me that I'm mistaken and crazy because everyone knows that God is love, well you can fuck right off with that gaslighting hogwash. A loving parent picks their kids up off the ground. They desire to see See their children thrive and succeed and even surpass their own accomplishments. They're not threatened by their children. Oh, and fear and corporal punishment are incredibly ineffective ways of teaching a child. Your children are not your subjects, and healthy parents don't need praise and worship. Only the incredibly insecure do. Demanding worship is not something you do if you're confident and secure in yourself. It's something you do if you're weak and you need to enforce order or boost your fragile ego. So Christians, when you post memes like this, just know that this is not the image of empowerment. It is not evolution by any stretch of the word. It is the sad and backwards devolving of a strong, proud human into a pathetic and terrified slave. But you are not a slave. Cast off these shackles because you can be free. Dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid.